physics in astronomy. Now, astronomy, of course, is a physical science and therefore it's not a surprise that to interpret the data which we receive by looking at any astronomical object either through telescope or through radio telescopes where you are not directly seeing the data but receiving the data at the telescope and then later on analyzing it so therefore because it's a physical science it's not surprising that we use the well-known laws of physics to interpret and understand astronomical objects. Now, we will see later that one of the fundamental laws of physics, namely gravitation, actually came out by very, very accurate astronomical observation. Now, one of the basic principles in physics is that of conservation laws. We have conservation of energy, we have conservation of momentum, we have conservation of angular momentum and so on. Now here is an example of using conservation of energy to understand supernovae explosion. It's well known since the days of uh, crab supernovae observed by the Chinese Buddhist monks way back in 1054 AD when they first saw the when they first recorded the crab supernovae a supernova explosion takes place as the core of a star collapses and essentially the energy that drives the supernova explosion is the gravitational potential energy of the entire star when it collapses to very compact object for example if a star from a radius of about 10 to the power 10 centimeters collapses to a radius of about 10 kilometers, then the gravitational potential energy that is liberated is few times 10 to the power 53 Earths. And this energy, since the total energy has to be conserved and the gravitational potential energy has become negative of this, the rest of the energy must be liberated in the form of mechanical energy, which is the kinetic energy of the ejecta of the envelope of the star. So as you can see, when the explosion takes place, about 1% of the energy is transferred to the envelope and envelope essentially gets blown off. But 99% of the energy are carried away by neutrinos. This was well confirmed by the supernova explosion that took place in the large Magellanic crowd in 1987, which is this event is also called supernova 1987. So here is an example where you use the conservation of energy to essentially find out how much energy goes into the blast wave, namely the kinetic energy of the ejecta, how much energy is carried away in neutrinos, which we can't directly see them but we can detect using neutrino detectors and also we can estimate how much energy goes in gravitational radiation. So here, as you can see that the principle of conservation of energy is illustrated by the swinging pendulum. As you know, when the pendulum swings, when it reaches the maximum height, the potential energy is maximum and therefore the kinetic energy is zero for a moment it is at rest, then it swings back. When it comes to the bottommost position, the potential energy is minimum because of that total energy, of course, is fixed. Therefore, at that point, it is moving faster. Its kinetic energy, which is half times mass into square root of the velocity, is maximum because its velocity is the highest when the pendulum comes uh, at the minimum. As you can see, the total energy is always fixed, but when the kinetic energy is maximum, potential energy is minimum. When the potential energy is maximum, the kinetic energy is minimum. The other very important conservation principle is of angular momentum. <coughs> Here you can see two massive balls spinning about each other. Now, of course, total energy is conserved, but what is conserved is also the angular momentum, which can be essentially written as the moment of inertia times 
the angular speed of these objects. Very often you would have gone to a uh, science museum where you are asked to sit on a rotating chair, then you are asked to put your arms, uh, you are asked to stretch out your arms and you hold dumbbells and then the chair in, on which you are sitting is turned. So initially the chair will be uh, turning at a very low rate and then you are asked to bring your arms, fists close to your chest. And then you start seeing that the chair starts rotating very fast. The reason is that the angular momentum is conserved. So the moment of inertia i into angular speed is conserved. When your arms were outstretched, the moment of inertia of the total system was very large and therefore the angular speed was small. But when you bring your arms together, the moment of inertia decreases. But since angular momentum has to be conserved, the angular speed becomes larger and you start spinning faster. In astronomy, this again happens during the birth of neutron star. We saw the supernova explosion where the most of the matter is blasted away in the explosion, but the core of the star collapses. And since it collapses, the original angular momentum is still conserved. So initially the star was rotating with a very small angular speed, but since now the object has collapsed to a radius of about 10 kilometers, so the moment of inertia has become very small. Therefore, to conserve the angular momentum, the neutron star which is formed rotates very fast. And these fast rotating neutron stars we actually observe as pulsars, which we will talk about later. The third conservation principle is the conservation of linear momentum, which says mass times velocity of an object which is not acted upon by a force is always constant. Here in this uh, uh, animation, you are shown the basic principle of uh, conservation of linear momentum. As you can see that a ball, it has some linear momentum when it strikes, it stops. But because linear momentum is conserved, the ball at the other side goes out with the same speed, illustrating that the uh, linear momentum of the first ball is transferred to the last ball and that also moves with the same uh, linear velocity because all the masses of these balls are identical. In astronomy, like in everywhere else, linear momentum conservation in the absence of external force always holds good. And again, we can go to the supernova explosion uh, principle. If we go back to the explosion of supernova, you can see that when the core of the star collapses and the uh, the gravitational binding energy that is released goes into the kinetic energy of the blast rate. Very often, the kinetic energy imparted is not spherically symmetric. That means what? The neutrinos that are uh, emitted, similarly, the envelope which is ejected, they can carry away some amount of linear momentum. But the total linear momentum has to be conserved. That is, total linear momentum to begin with was, let's say, zero. And if after the explosion, neutrinos carry a chunk of the linear momentum and the blast wave carry some other chunk of linear momentum, then the resulting neutrinos